Leon S. Kennedy, rookie comp to special agent and all round badass. He's the first character you have to play as in the mercenaries and is generally considered to be the weakest and most complicated one to use. As a result, those who wish to unlock the hand cannon can end up increasingly frustrated with Leon's inability to match up to the other characters in the game. Many people have messaged me to ask for advice as the only character they're yet to get 60k with is Leon. Surprisingly, Leon isn't as bad as you may initially think, and in the right hands with the right strategies, he can more than hold his own on each of the mercenaries maps. In this video, I'll be covering the best tips and tricks I can think of to help you not only get 60k with Leon, but easily reach scores of 100k or more. We'll start where RE4 begins, the village. If you haven't seen my spawn guide for this map, then you need to know that in order to spawn all the enemies and get the spawning working correctly on the 60fps versions of the game, you need to start next to the tower. Quickly run to the window on the left, jump through and grab the timer. If you've done it fast enough, these enemies on the right will have appeared. If not, you need to restart. From here, it's time to gather supplies. The brown feather chickens drop shotgun shells and a grenade. Behind the chicken barn, there is a fire grenade, and in the tower, there is a hand grenade. Under the stairs of the shotgun house, you can find a flash grenade, and upstairs, there's another grenade. Outside, you'll find the second chicken. This is the one that drops the hand grenade. Make sure to break down all the doors and windows so the ganado can move faster through the map. Now, to have a good star, I recommend luring the ten ganado into the large barn. You can provoke them into running towards you by aiming at them, firing your gun, and backing up. Once they start running, run into the barn and count them as they come in so you know you've got all ten. Once they're in position, blow up the barrel and take the chest. For those who haven't seen my scoring system guide, the bonus chests make each kill during them count for 1300 points. These are the key to high scores on mercenaries and the more kills you can get during them, the easier high scores and especially 60k becomes. It's important to avoid killing bosses during the chest if it can be helped. So use the flash grenade on the two chainsaw sisters and keep killing until the 30 seconds bonus time runs out. Now it's all about maintaining the combo. Leon's shotgun usually kills most enemies with a headshot from close range. As for the Chainsaw Sisters, who have a lot of health, the faster you can kill them the better. So shoot them with the shotgun, then chip their health away with the black tail as it fires much faster than the shotgun does, meaning it actually does more damage per second. From here, head into the cow barn and stand at the back. Now, all you need to do is stand your ground and kill everything that is in front of you, as you are effectively bottlenecking the enemies so they can only come from one direction. No surprise chainsaws sneaking up behind you here. If you're feeling brave, you can run to the next bonus chest for extra points, but this isn't necessary for 60k, so if you'd rather stay in the cow barn, do so. Keep in mind that shooting the dynamite stick will cause it to explode instantly. This is useful for turning the TNT Ganado into walking hand grenades. Remember, there are only 6 Chainsaw Sisters who appear in pairs at kill counts of 10, 25 and 40. Once all the Bea Sisters are dead, you can either keep killing like this, or run and hide in the tower until time runs out.
The next stage is Castle. I personally think this is Leon's hardest stage, but given that there's 348 enemies here, it's literally a case of just keep killing and keeping the combo up until time runs out. The main problems Leon has on this stage are the archers and our blind friends, the Garadoris. Fear not, however, as these problems are easily solved in various ways. For this map, I recommend using the shotgun on large groups and then use the handgun to finish them off. Use the handgun on individual zealots while using the shotgun to destroy their shields. The first Garador spawns at 25 kills, so using that information, here are a couple ways of dealing with him. The first is to be up here when he appears, as he will run directly to your location. Jump down, get some quick kills to provoke the Garador into jumping down, and this will allow you to shotgun him in the back. If you're close to him and aim the shotgun up, you can still shoot his plaga even when he turns to face you. If this tactic seems tricky, then you can use the fire grenade on him. This will make him double over for some easy shots on his plaga, and two direct hits from the shotgun should be enough to kill him quickly. However, if you want an even easier time on Castle without those pesky archers or the Garador, then you can use this alternative strategy. Grab your supplies and timers, then head up to the second floor interior staircase. There's a bonus chest up here to start your combo with. The archers can't hit you, and the Garador won't come here at 25 kills either. So it can be just you and the Zealots, just going up and down the stairs repeatedly to keep them spawning. If you want to kill the Garador for those extra points, then jump back down and wait for him to pass the explosive barrel before shooting it. Now shoot his plaga a couple times and he'll be dealt with. Speaking of Garadores, if you do want to face the other two on this stage, then you best save your grenades for the fully armoured variant, as his body can't be shot through with a shotgun like the other two. Use a grenade to stun him, shoot his plaga, rinse and repeat. Map 3 is the base or island, however you want to call it. This is the stage with the least number of enemies. But don't panic about that, because the bosses are JJ, the fat guy with the Gatling gun, and there's three of them here. Each counts for 10,000 points, so killing all three will give you 30,000 points. That's halfway to your 60k goal already. However, the enemies here can do a lot of damage to Leon, so you need to be a little more careful. Fortunately, the regular Ganado die quickly to Leon's weapons, which makes a nice change. I recommend starting from this position because there are two bonus chests close together. If you can get 30 kills in the minute of time they provide, then that's another 30,000 points which will make for an easy 60k.
for JJ, try to get close and aim for headshots with the shotgun to keep him sun so he doesn't hit you or shoot you. He'll go down for an easy 10k after a couple hits. By now you should have 60k, but if not, grab more time, kill more guys, and wait for the last JJ to spawn. He should be able to give you the remaining points you need to get 5 stars on this map. And as you can see, JJ won't shoot at you unless you look at him. This can also be used to your advantage, so do keep it in mind. Here we are, the big one, Waterworld. The hardest mercenaries map in the game, and the most daunting for new players due to our terrifying and permanently angry friend, Super Salvador. There are two of these monstrosities on this map and they are heavily resistant to gunfire. So how is Leon supposed to handle them? With ease, of course. As by this point, I'm sure you can handle killing regular Ganado and keep a combo going. I'll focus the last portion of this guide on all the different tactics you can use on Salvador. For the first Salvador, we spawn on this tower and make sure not to damage any of the ganado. We also need to make sure we don't look at the TNT ganado either, as we don't want him throwing his dynamite and ruining everything. Jump down on the left side and you'll see that Salvador is hiding under the tower. It's worth noting that on the PS2 and PC 2007 versions of the game, Salvador will not be sitting idle like this, but on every other version of the game, he is. Equip the shotgun, run up to him, shoot him in the head to stagger him, wait for him to recover and shoot him again. Keep this up until he dies. From here you can climb the ladder for the bonus chest and start your run. The biggest issue is the second Salvador, who spawns at 30 kills. If you're lucky, you can enable a glitch that prevents him from spawning entirely. If you have a grenade or TNT ganado, kill them and climb this ladder when 30 kills is counted. If you're climbing the ladder when the kill count goes to 30 and over, the second Salvador will never appear. However, if you're unable to do this, then you may be forced to fight him. So, how do we do that? If you're brave, you can challenge him head on and use the shotgun to stun him. This is the most difficult way to deal with him due to the other ganados potentially interfering and giving him time to get close to you, so I wouldn't recommend this. One way is to knock him down when he's jumping. He's vulnerable when jumping ladders, so if you're using your handgun, start firing at the top of the ladder when you hear him grunt. The second shot should knock him back down to the bottom of the ladder. However, if the timing of that is a bit too tight for you, then use the shotgun. Wait until his feet are almost touching the floor, and then fire the shotgun to send them all the way back to the bottom. This trick can also be used on the first Salvador if you want to include him as part of the first combo for more serious high scoring runs. Instead of killing him at the pace of the tower, we shoot him three times and run for the ladder. An advanced version of this trick can kill him in one shot. If he falls into the water, he'll instantly die, 
as swinging a flaming chainsaw might be one of his talents, but swimming is not. This can be tricky to pull off due to the other ganado, but if we stand here at this angle, when we knock him back down, he'll fall into the water like so. From here, use what you've learned and just keep up your combo. Use the bonus chests and stay alive until time runs out. With some simple but effective gameplay and a little luck, you should get 60k with Leon without too much trouble and be a fifth of the way towards obtaining the hand cannon. You will now also have all the other characters unlocked and they're all much easier to use than Leon. But just in case, I'll have guides for them too. So, if you found this video helpful, return the favour by liking and sharing it. If you would like to see more videos like this, along with guides for the other characters, then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be the first to know when the next guide is uploaded. Until then, good luck, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.